So hi everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we really appreciate you making time and then coming and attending Bill Conference, first of all. I hope you are having a great day. And thank you for attending at 5 p.m. this wonderful session. I understand it's 5 p.m. It's a long day. It started at 8.30. So I would like to keep it short, and then we'll open the forum for the Q&A. Hi, I'm Kunal Nayar. I'm a program manager in the cloud and AI. Uh, specifically, I work on the product called Windows Error Crash Reporting Service. Outside is known as Windows Error Reporting Service. We, our service collects all this crash information, and then we share it, analyze these crash reports by analyzing the memory dump in the debugging engine. And then we share that data both with the first as well as with the third party developers so that they can prioritize and fix these critical issues. This is the high level agenda which we will be covering in this talk, where I'll be introducing the program which we have launched called Windows Desktop Application Program in January this year. Uh, we announced the preview program last year at Build. I will give you a quick live demo. Hopefully, demo gods would be generous. So we'll have a live demo, and then we'll open it for Q&A. But before I start, I want to share our mission. So the product, Windows Error Crash Reporting Service, we collect all this, our, our, we ensure the Microsoft customer, when they use your application, they are having a great reliability experience by sharing this diagnostic data, both with internal to Microsoft as well as externally with you, so that you can prioritize and fix some of the critical issues which is impacting the quality of your app. Now, you might be wondering, how does the quality of the app impact my customer sentiment or customer experience? So we have done this study. And this study we're able to do because if the application is in the store, there is also a functionality where consumer, when they install and they start using the app or the game, they can provide the reviews. And this study has been conducted when the customers are giving the low ratings and reviews. When we generated the word cloud, one of the top reasons came out of that is the crash, performance, the UI. So these are the big categories that if you as a developer are not going to address that, then the overall customer sentiment would go down. That will really impact your install base as well as your business. Hence, I want to underline this point that path to the happy customer is through reliability, is through quality. If you have a high quality application, great performance, your customer would feel it, and they will appreciate that. And I think you will, it, that would reflect that on the install base as well as the recommendation when they will be making it to their friends and family. And this is applicable for both consumer application as well as the line of business app developers. So we have launched this program known as Windows Desktop Application Program. And for the rest of the talk, we can address it WDAP, short form. So one of the core important application health report is being, is, is, has been available to the store app developer. If you are a modern app developer and you publish your app in the store, you get access to this health report. And we have got some great feedback. And we have been working with some of the developers. And they have been telling us some great things. And using this health report, they're able to bring down the number of failures uh, substantially. And we have getting that feedback from the Win32 developers as well. So this, is, this program actually addressed that gap by providing this same rich crash analytics report, as well as the install report, to the Win32 developers without Win32 or desktop app developer to publish their app in the store. All you need to do is like just sign your application with a digital certificate, because and then come to Microsoft Developer Center, upload your digital certificate, using which we will establish the claim that this application belongs to you. And then we'll, after that, you'll have access to the crash and the install reports. How to get started? If you don't have an account in developer.microsoft.com, come create account. Register your account for your company. Then sign up for this program, Windows Desktop Application Program. Upload the digital certificate for your application, which you have signed. And then after 24 to 48 hours, you'll get, start getting access to your uh, dashboard, analytics report. So if you are a new, new customers who have not 
you don't have an account at Microsoft or developer Microsoft, you can like come and create account register. You can follow this and then able to open your account. For the existing Microsoft developers, if you already have Dev Center account, you will see under the program tabs, window available program, you can click on the Windows desktop application program and that link gets started, would then walk you through the what are the next steps. You will sign the application developer agreement and then upload the sign. Then you download the XML and then you sign the, that with the same certificate using which you have signed your application. Upload it, we will extract the thumbprint out of that and then using this, we will. this is a very important step because this is the step with which we will establish the claim ownership of your binaries. This is to ensure that the right data reaches to the right developers. I don't know how many of you were legacy partner, SysJ partner portal users, but this is quite a difference between the legacy channel and the new channel. And then you just wait for 24 to 48 hours. In the mean, behind the scenes, we are establishing that claim ownership. And once we establish, then we'll give you access to your dashboard. Any questions so far? If not, I'll just switch to live demo. So for the demo purpose, I'm using this test account. And in that, we have uh, feed some of the test application by providing our test certificate. But over here, what you can see is like I have uh, six different products, application. And this I've sorted by the number of failures in the last 30 days. Now, on the left side, I see the failure sorted by the, in the last 30 days, what all the failure trend I've seen. And then on the right side is the install base for that application. Now. I'm interested in, I'm a developer, and I'm interested in, I'm, I'm a developer for the Azure log.exe, and I want to see what are the failure trend or the crash report in the last 30 days for my application. So now I, when I click on the failure report, it will take me to the health report. What it does is shows me the failure trend on this application in the last 30 days. For this application, we have crashes. For some applications, you'll also see the memory failure and the hang. So the crashes are when the app crashes on the computer, and then we correct the crash report as well as the crash dump. If it hangs, when it's not responding, then the system, or it's a deadlock, the system also collect the system recognize that, and then send the hang report, and then we also analyze the memory dump and to establish that this is a hang issue. And the memory failure are the buffer overruns on the stack, uh, which often can result into security exploitation. That's where we have a separate category. But if you go further, I can see the failure breakdown by the different application version. In this case, I have one version. But if you have 10 different versions out in the production, you will see the failure breakdown by the different app version, what it does, it gives me where to narrow down which version I should be focusing more on. On the right side, it's, it's, it's break down the failure reports on the different geo regions. Let's say I have released my app and I'm getting a call from India market to my customer service support that there is something going on in that market. So how do I narrow down the problem only relating to the India market. So with this gives me that ability. And then continue forward, I have the failure ranking. Now, this gives me which one to prioritize. So in this case, I have three failures. But the number one failure is, re is resulting in 97.53% crashes. So if I have a limited time, I'm just going to focus on the number one issue. I don't even, I'll probably ignore the, the, the last two issues. And we have seen this, this, this chart where the 80% of the problems are caused by the 20% of the issue. So if we give you that priority list of the failure, you just focus on the top failure, and that can 
actually resolve in in 80% of your problem. What we have also done is we have given you a rich set of filters using which you can narrow down this problem from a certain market or a device type. In this, in this case, my application is only running on Windows 10. So I can select Windows 10. And I can further go granular, because Windows 10 is now a service model. So there is version 1607, 1709, 1803, which is, the, which is the latest version, which went out in April, and or even to the insider builds. So what it does, it gives me the ability to narrow down the problem before even it goes out in public. Now I decided that I want to focus on this particular failure. Now here, the failure is it's a CLR exception. Uh, it's caused by the system unauthorized when I'm trying to access a memory. And that resulted into exception code, but it happened in the DLL, which is Azure log.dll. It's, it's within my application. And the last part is the function and the class, the class and the function where this failure has occurred. So if I have symbols to your uh, binary, using our root cause debugging analysis, we can actually go all the way to the line in the code where the failure has occurred. So by the time you, you Look at the failure. Even the failure name itself will take you all the way to the line in the line in your code file. So then you can focus that by what's going on there. What is the piece of code which causes into this failure? So now when I click here, I'm in the context of particular failure. This and now I can see the failure trend for the last 30 days. And these are the failure log files which we have collected from those machines. Now stack trace is the call stack, which we have analyzed by using the symbol of this application. And in this case, uh, it's the constructor when it is getting invoked. And that's where the exception has happened. And that resulted in, in this exception or this particular failure. But in case uh, you are not, you don't think that the call stack is right, you also have the ability to download the crash dump file by clicking on the failure download and it will open the it will open the crash dump if i click on open you will see it has downloaded the memory dump onto your local machine by using the Visual Studio debugger or windows debug windows debugging tool which comes part of the sdk you can open this crash dump and associate your symbol file, symbolicate this crash, and start debugging there. It also tells you the device make and model from where we are seeing this crash coming from. So in this case, you can see the number one is coming from Lenovo and that model, or the Microsoft Corporation Surface Book. So if you to decide, if you want to set up a local in-house repro on a, on a device where you can able to repro this problem, you can go and target these set of devices with this set of configuration, which most likely would result into, into this crash issue in your environment. And, and these are all coming from out in the world. So using this, I can really now target and know, can discover the blind spot in my application to see what are the, the customers who are using my application, what is their experience, what all crashes they are I'm going to get from them. And then I can prioritize the top failure and then go after the top failure and then debug the issue. While we have already done the debugging, but if you want to do debug further, you can then download this crash dump and start debugging yourself. One, another analytic, so this is this summarize the, the demo of the crash report. But another analytic which we have enabled is the install report. So what does install report provide you? It provides you the last 30 days of your install base, break down by the different versions of your application, as well as the market in which it is installed. So it gives you the normalization factor that, OK, this many number of failures are coming from this many number of install base. So then it gives you the priority. I'll switch back to the slide deck. 
So just to summarize the highlights, I think this is a great, great functionality which is always available to the to internal to Microsoft for various products. I was a developer myself and I've used this extensively in order to find the blind spot in my application, in order to get the critical crash report out in the production, and I've used this data to take it to the ship room and convince our management team that this is where we need to prioritize and fix this issue. So please approve this fix. We need to fix because the impact of these failures are this many failures would go down or this many users would have a great experience. So you have now the same capability we are providing you as a part of this application health report. You'll have access to the stack trace, the crash dumps, as well as the install report. So you should be able to use this, and it's all for free. You should be able to access this and now pro improve the quality of your application and at the end, improve the end user customer experience. We also released the API because I know developers would love to slice and dice the data as per what they care about. So you can now use the API to automate and pull this data and put it into your system and then run your debugging and diagnostic workflows as per your convenience. So don't wait. You should be able to go to ak.ms desktop program. It's a detailed rich of documentation available. You can like get started. Uh, you should code sign your binaries and upload the same certificate using which you have signed the binaries for us to establish your claim. And then you have access to the richer analytics like health report. So then you can improve the quality of your application. And for the feedback, we have this email, win32analytics at microsoft.com. So send, send us your questions, send us your feedback, and our engineering team is always monitoring that and will re we'll re reply back to your questions. And I, I, I think with this, I, I, that's pretty much as my demo is. So I'll open the for I'll keep this because the next slide I have is the Q&A, but I'll actually keep this so that you have time to take note. But I'll open the forum for the questions, so feel free to ask any questions you have on this. Go ahead. T tell me your name, your, uh, your company. Okay. I see. So I think the question is, just for the rest of the audience, is they want to, so his team tried the application crash report for their application by signing up this program, and they're not able to access the crash dumps or crash download for all their applications. So, so there are two, so if you are part of the legacy SysJet partner portal, those of you are, who are aware of the legacy channel and who onboarded to this, we have provided you the ability to, we have given you the access to the crash dumps. But because of the privacy reasons, and as you have, you must have seen the Satya's keynote, the data sensitivity, and these crash dumps are sensitive information. We want to ensure that stack trace are the richer and richer, so that stack trace can answer the question what you're looking for in terms of debugging and diagnostic ability without customer, without developer need to download this crash dump into their local boxes. Now, there are, what we are doing is, we are providing the crash dump from the Windows Insider build. Now, if, if, you, if your customers are sitting on the Windows Insider build, once customers run the Windows Insider build, they are giving a consent that they can share this diagnostic data with both Microsoft as well as with the third party. But when you are with the end user, the retail audience, we don't have an explicit... We want to make sure that when we are sharing their data with the third party, only for the purpose of debugging and diagnostic. So that's where you see the, that there are for certain application has access to the dump file, if that coming from the Windows Insider, but if that coming from the retail, you only have access to the check trace file.
Yes. So the question is that today the app developer doesn't have Win32 app developer doesn't have a way to publish their symbols. And if in the absence of not having symbols, the stack trace is not very useful because in order to root cause the analysis, in order to do the root cause analysis, we need access to your symbol file. So we are working on lighting that path so that app developer can publish their symbol file in the store. Uh, it is going to be coming in the next release. It is, in, it is under the plan, but we don't have a firm date yet which I can share with you. But I would say the, this is on top of our list, and as soon as it will be available, we'll make an announcement so that if it's available in the preview mode, you can try it out, and then you will start seeing not bang unknown, but actual line in the failure where the failure has occurred. So, so I think the question is, is, th is this program is only useful from the Windows Insider build? What about the retail audience? So we are giving you the crash signal. We are giving you the, all the data which we have analyzed on your behalf. What we are limiting is access to the CAF file. If we have symbols and we anal in which we are bringing it in future, then you don't need access to the CAF file because we're able to debug and diagnose the issue by doing the stack trace, call stack analysis. But I understand there are still certain cases where you still need access to the memory dump to do your further debugging. And I think we want to have the enough sample set from the Windows Insider which can give you that, that, that small set of sample of the CAF file, but not from the retail audience. So the example which I showed was only running on Windows 10. But if, if you go back to your actual application, you will also see the crash report coming from Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 on the down-level OSs. We are also giving you the stack trace from the, these signals. So we are, not, we are sharing that signal back with you, both from the retail as well as from the Windows Insider. But what we are limiting is access to the CAP file from, only from the Windows Insider. The, yeah, dump file, access to the crash dump file. Otherwise, the whole report, the rest of the failure trend, uh, the filters, uh, the failure detail page, everything is available from both the retail as well as from the insider. And retail means all the way to the 7 and 8.1. Yep. Right? It's like Apart from, you mean the log file? We, which, which, is, which has caused the crash. No, I think it's a fair feedback. Uh, we'll probably take this as a feedback and say, OK, we to share the, the thread analysis for all the threads out there. How can we do that in a seamless manner? Yep. Question. So the question is, are there any limitation on the, on the size of the dump file, such as the dump file could not go into a gigabyte, a multi-gigabyte, multi right? There is, there is a limitation today. And I think the limitation is the four gigabytes. But in the Win32 application world, we have not really seen the, the dump size going into that category. If you are a game developer and you are writing this big uh, 
application, big games and using the big framework. That is the scenario we have seen the dump size goes in that order. But usually, usually, uh, we have a different categories of dump file, triage, mini, heap. It don't go into that, that size. At least I've, that's not I've seen it. But if you have certain example for your application where you're seeing the dump size goes in the multi-gigabyte, I'm happy to take that and follow up with you offline. Any, any, any further questions? Go ahead. Okay, so the question is, the developer have a lot of application. How do we identify that these list of application belongs to this developer? So, so when I mentioned in the beginning that all you need to do is supply the digital certificate, which because the assumption here is that when you release your application out in out in the world, you sign all your application using the digital certificate. Now, if you code sign all your binaries and then you come as a part of sign up this program you supply you use the same digital certificate and upload that then on the telemetry side when we collect all the metadata for the application and then we as a part of collecting the metadata we collect the thumbprint using which they have been signed and when you come to us and then give us your digital certificate we extract the thumbprint and then we match that thumbprint so that essentially establish the claim ownership that this list of applications signed by this thumbprint belongs to you because you have come to us and provided that uh, code sign certificate. So that, that, that bridged the gap between the developer and all the application. So I'll, I'll take your question maybe later, because I think we are running out of time for the next session. I'll be here, standing here, so I'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you, everyone, for your time, for coming and listening to this session.